Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. We are following three big stories tonight. First, breaking right now, State Rep. Jewel Jones sent to jail after violating his bond for the third time. A bit derailed. James Craig's official announcement for governor hits a snag after protesters take over the podium. Demolition begins. Crews take down a damaged building at the site of that underground mystery in southwest Detroit. But officials are still short on answers. All that coming up here on Local 4 News at 5, but let's start things off the 5 o'clock hour with the threat of severe weather over the next several hours. Strong line of storms taking shape out west and marching our way. Uh, right now, severe thunderstorm watch in effect for the entire region. And we've already seen warnings pop up. Let's get right over to Paul with where things stand. Hi, Paul. Yeah, hi, Kim. And things in the metro area have settled down a bit. You can see how quickly these things flare up and then quickly settle down. Just take a look at the storm that came out of Washington County. Look at how quickly that thing fizzled out. That's less than an hour that it went from big red to basically nothing on the radar. Let's slide things to the north here. Let's uh, just show you this. We have a storm just pulsing up here in southern Lapeer County. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that and also northern Lapeer County. We have a warning there, but again, we have this wider line that is going to be coming down across the area and we're going to watch that over the next few hours. We've had a couple of storm reports down in Hudson, multiple trees down from severe thunderstorm winds there. And then over in Berkeley, we had a reported 60 mile per hour wind gust and penny size hail. All of us, as Devin just mentioned, under a severe thunderstorm watch until 11 o'clock tonight. And if you are going to the Tiger game, well, there's going to be trouble. There is going to be some storms coming through during the game, so we'll keep an eye on all of this. Have another update for you coming up in just a bit, guys. Don't forget, we have the app, the best app in the nation. This is the best weather app in the nation. The local forecasters app has real time radar. You can watch this stuff in real time. Just go to the app store, search under WDIV. Paul, back to you in just a few moments. Now let's get to breaking news from Howell, where a judge has sent State Representative Joel Jones to jail for violating his bond. This is video of Jones being led out of court in handcuffs after prosecutors say he drank alcohol and tampered with his tether. Rod Maloney was in court for today's hearing. Uh, Rod, did, did he have anything to say? Uh, just that he admitted that he had violated his bond, and that's, uh, that's uh, how he wound up. Uh, is getting behind bars tonight. Now, you know, he has been very loud, and this was a very boisterous arrest, and uh, he's brought a lot of attention on himself since that April 6th arrest, claiming that he knew the governor, that the cops are going to be in trouble, and now with a third bond violation, he's going to be in jail for a few nights anyway. Jones came into court today on a $15,000 bond, dressed the distinguished state representative that he is. But prosecutor Cynthia Jones told Judge Michael Hattie, Jones has acted anything but since his April arrest. This defendant's actions from his conduct during the charged crimes through each of the three bond violations show that he believes that as a person who writes our laws, that he is above our laws. Jones tugged at his pants covering his alcohol tether, but this is what got him into trouble. Prosecutors saying he tucked his sock up underneath the tether, making it unable to take alcohol readings. That, along with showing minute alcohol readings a few days before that, brought this emergency hearing where Jones told the judge. Yes, Your Honor, I take um, responsible. This was Jones' third bond violation. He'd already paid the court $1,000 for not paying the fee to keep the alcohol tether active. With Jones' admission, Chief Judge Michael Hattie said, As you vote, the defense remained in custody of the uh, sheriff until uh, 17. And away to the jailhouse, Jones went. Outside the courthouse, a Reverend yeah, Dr. Really Paul Turner claimed to have helped raise and mentor the representative. Sometimes second chances are needed uh, in this case. Maybe he does need to sit down for a few days, uh, but we pray that this all will come to an end and Representative Jones will be able to go further in his career. Now, the judge could have kept Jones in jail much longer than it's likely he will be because he was supposed to have a pretrial and a motion hearing at the end of the month and then October 1st. The judge moved everything up until Friday. And so on Friday, we'll find out more about where all of this is headed. Back to you. Yeah, right. I'm just curious. How do prosecutors come up with the proof about Jones's tether problem? 
Uh, that's uh, quite an interesting corner of the story. The prosecutor said today that it was Jewel Jones and Jewel Jones himself who had sent a picture of his tether. Oh. And apparently the picture reflected him being in a car, which was the evidence that showed that he was where he wasn't supposed to be with the tether the way it wasn't supposed to be. So in the end, they say he basically gave up the information himself. himself. Okay. Rod, thanks. Well, it was one of the worst kept secrets in Michigan uh, politics, but today, former Detroit Police Chief James Craig's official announcement of his campaign for governor had to wait a little bit longer. It's after protesters tried to derail his speech before it even got started. James Craig has got to go! James Craig is full of hate! We won't let him win our state! The group Detroit Will Breathe took over the podium set up for Craig on Belle Isle, forcing the announcement to be moved to another location. Larry Spruill been following the story for us. Larry, it did not stop him from making his announcement. It did not, Devin and Kimberly. His media team moved the announcement to another location nearby. Now, it was mostly just media members and a few of his supporters. Now, he did officially announce that he is running for governor, but he also addressed the protesters. This group of protesters took over Bell Isle Tuesday morning, just moments before former Detroit Police Chief James Craig was scheduled to make his announcement that he was running for governor. James Craig is full of hate. Our cameras rolling as Craig arrived and walked up to the podium, but left shortly after. That situation forced Craig and his team to move to another location nearby for the big news. My name is James Craig, and I'm running to be your governor. Yeah! The governor for the state of Michigan. During his speech, Craig explained why he feels he's the one for the job. Because many of the supposed leaders of today simply do not leave. The damn roads are not fixed. <laughs> Unless someone here can tell me different. He also addressed the protesters at Bell Lau moments before, claiming they were paid. I'm winning. I got the message out anyway. I'm winning. And you know what's sad about today and disappointing? That small group of paid protesters, I'll say it again, small group of paid protesters did nothing. What do you have to say to the Detroiters here and minorities who may not support you right now? I got to tell you something. Over the weeks of listening, uh, I believe more Detroiters support me than many know. Let me tell you why. I was branded here in Detroit. I served eight years as a police chief. And Craig tells me that he is expecting and believing that the Detroiters will remember his tenure as police chief. He is hoping that that extra support will push him over the edge to win the race. We are live in downtown Detroit tonight. Larry Sproul, Local yep. 4. Long run ahead. All right, Larry. Today, crews demolished the building damaged at the site of that road that buckled in southwest Detroit. And this comes as officials still don't know what happened underground yeah. causing all of this damage. Victor Williams has been at the site all day long. Victor. This is still a big mystery. Still a big mystery indeed. Devin and Kimberly, take a look right behind me. This is all that is left of the building that had to be demolished. As you can see, all of the rubble is now covered by some sort of plastic. And this is just feet away from where the ground has strangely expanded. Even at this point, there are still so many unanswered questions. There's some, something going on underneath there. Detroit's chief operating officer, Hakeem Barry, says so far, the city still has no clue as to what led to a swollen road and building having to be demolished in southwest Detroit because of the ground literally shifting in 60 minutes. A slow movement of the earth uh, over the course of about an hour or so. And so that's what our investigation is going to be once we get the building. Uh, tore down and then we can start doing some es excavating to see what's underneath the, uh, uh, the asphalt there. It took crews hours to demolish the medical marijuana dispensary stash Detroit Tuesday. DTE had to cut the power and repair a gas break to make sure the building came down in a safe manner. But even with multiple residents complaining of a strong natural gas odor in recent weeks, there's still no evidence of that being the cause of the problem. So far, all indications is that, again, there was no gas explosion or major water breakage here that caused it. The entire strange turn of events is unlike anything that has happened here in the city before. 
I think it's weird. A lot of our experts have said they've never seen anything like this, and everyone's intrigued to find out what happened. We can't rule anything out. And we're told that there was significant damage at the building right next door. So right now they are raising the question on if they're going to have to do the same thing to this building as well. But coming up at six, we're talking to some of the employees who actually worked at the dispensary. Some of them had to come out here and literally watch as their memories all crumbled down to the ground. We'll learn more about that and what it was like for them coming right up at 6 p.m. In southwest Detroit, Victor Williams local for Victor, so what is the city saying about safety concerns because there are a lot of residents that, that live nearby and I know they're concerned. That's right. Well, the city is saying that this was an isolated incident and people nearby do not have to worry. They don't have to evacuate whatsoever. Victor, thanks. We've got much more to come on this Tuesday. Let's check in with Dr. Frank McGeorge. Doc. The battle over boosters. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. With experts split over whether they're needed yet, there's a pivotal vote happening this Friday. Ahead, we'll talk to one of the FDA's key advisors about what she's looking for before casting her vote. Okay, Doc, and a new study is painting a pretty bleak picture of the job market here in Detroit. New tonight, the good news, bad news scenario unfolding and what's being done to get people back to work. But coming up first, the defenders getting answers from Ford in Flat Rock as the military gets called in to help with the cleanup there. That's next.